G'day, I'm Clive and welcome to CDP Outdoors. Today what we're going to have a look at today is the 511 uh, Rush 72 hour tactical backpack. Okay, let's start with the top. We've got a good strong handle there for lifting it up or hanging it. On either side of the handle We've got the Velcro or hook and loop, which allows for either your aerial from the radio to come through or your hydration. And the same on this side, there's another one with hook and loop with a hole for your hydration to come in and out or for your aerial. The material it's a 1050 Cordora material, which is really tough, strong and it'll last a good long time and if you're a person who will look after it, it'll last as long as you. This bit here, we've got a small zip and in this zip is a small pocket and it's got the, the fleecy pocket on there for whether you want to put your glasses in there, your phone in there. So that's all good. And whilst we're here, you see the design and this is what they class as the yoke shoulder straps. They've changed the design to this because it makes it stronger. But I'll come back to that in a while. Let's start going down the shoulder straps. We've got all your molly system coming down the shoulder straps so you can attach your small pouches onto there. The same on this side. We have your chest strap on there, which is easily adjusted just by unhooking it and moving up to the next one and hooking it back on. You also have the quick release buckle on it, so you can just drop your pack and go. And then coming down to Again, your waist belt has got the molly system on, so you can attach your small pouches. On this side I normally carry my canteen, and on this side I normally carry another pouch with my cook kit in. A nice strong buckle, easy to use, some good strong quality straps there with some good stitching, doubled over nice and strong. If you don't want to use the uh, waist belt, what you can do is just simply roll it up and tuck it in here. So there you go, it's all out of the way. So you've got a choice of options with or without. Okay, while we're here, let's show you this now. Now we have a drain hole here. And these two smaller patches you can see are like a rubber material. And they've got all, it's like little bits on it. Or little knobbly bits, whatever you want to call it. And what that does, it helps it to hold onto your back and stops it moving around so much. Some nice good padding. Like I said, if you put your belt behind, this padding's even more here, so it pushes the padding into your back more. You've got these section here, which is to allow for your back to breathe, so you don't perspire so much. And again, for your shoulder blades, there's some more padding. And we have another zip here, you can open from either side. And what you go is in here is your hydration pouch and this will hold up to a three litre hydration. And your actual hydration hose will go through here, it goes into your pack and out of the holes on either side of the handle like I showed you earlier. And then down onto your shoulder strap. Okay, in this part, which is the opposite, the other side to your back.
we have a plastic frame that holds the shape of the pack and that's got I believe it's an aluminium strip going down so you can remove this if you don't want it or if you want to change the shape you'll just bend your aluminium here to make it fit your back better As you can see, it's a good fit. So we've got your first compression strap at the top. Another good buckle. You've got a, a row of molly. And then we've got the pocket. Starting from here. And at the bottom, there's another compression strap. So this pocket, as you can see, has got all the molly webbing going all the way down and a good zip on it. And the good part about this is the, the actual pocket is on the outside of the pack, it's not part of the pack. So unless you overfill it, all the actual uh, bulk of what you put in the pockets will come out so you'll still have the area in the main part of your pack. And in each pocket, we have two other organiser pockets here and lower down too. And we've got exactly the same on the other side. First compression strap, second compression strap, or your molly webbing. Again, when you fill it, it pushes the pocket out and not into the pack. And two organizer pockets inside. On the back of your pack, you've got another organizer section. But in between there, you've got another storage area. So in here you can put I don't know, a wet tarp, dry tarp, coat, jumpers, anything you want. But as we do the compression straps up, that pulls that in to make everything you're carrying there nice and secure. So there's that now nice and secure. And the more you pull your compression straps in, the tighter that will get. Next we have a small pocket here and the top row of molly here we have a hook and loop so you can put your name patch on there and it's all usable. So let's open the pocket and what we've got at the back is a little organiser area. And in the front there's another mesh one. And the good thing about the mesh, you can see what you got in there. Once you've got something in the back there, and in the organiser bit here as well, the mesh, it doesn't leave much room here, only about, what, probably half an inch, just enough to fit your phone in. And before we go inside, at the bottom here, Again, we've got the molly strap in, so we can add more straps, so we can carry our, I don't know, a swag at the bottom, a rolled up blanket, your tent, anything you want. So now let's get into this front organiser pouch, or this front organiser pocket. Again, you can see we've got all the molly on here, and it's all usable. Another hook and loop patch for your morale badges or anything you want. Some good, this is what I didn't say on the rest, but these pulleys, just to open the zips, makes it so much easier and there will be no trouble when you're doing that with your gloves on either. So let's start with this part first. As you can see you've got some good area. Down here I normally keep a, a ground sheet or a small tarp. 
we've got another mesh pocket at the top with a zip on. I uh, kept my power cord in this bit I used to. Uh, I think they call these in magazine pouches, so you can keep your magazines in there. And both with the straps and knock and loop to keep everything in place. Top here, we've got another mesh pocket. So all good for organizing things. And below that, we've got another closing pocket. And it's a good deep pocket, this one is. That goes on the pack from about here all the way down to the bottom. So it's a good size pocket in there. And then we've got an open pocket here, which goes to the bottom of this one also, so there's a good area for use. And then we've got two small straps with the mitten hooks on to either hook your keys so you can throw them in there so you're not going to lose them, or even throw your ferro rod or your torch so you can always get hold of them quite easy without having to rumble or rummage around your pack. So here we've got another two pockets with the strap with the hook and loop on and then pockets are probably what's that, four or five inches deep but they're expandable so you can get some fairly decent amount of gear in there on both of them. Behind this one We've got one big enough, say, for a multi-tool. And on this side, we've got three smaller, slim pockets, similar to your pen holders. So that's really handy for organising everything. So you could fit a ferro rod in there, or even one of your tactical pens, anything you want. Okay, now let's have a look on the inside of the pack. Let's undo these compression straps again. So we've got the zips, two zips on it. And this opens up as an oyster shell. So let's show you the top part here first. The top pocket I showed you for your glasses, your phone. This is what I was on about where it actually comes into your pack. So whatever you put in there will take up that small amount of space at the top. And this point here is where your hydration hose comes through and up through there and out there and then down to your shoulder strap. Let's pull it out of the way. The first thing you'll see is we've got a mesh pocket here, a fairly large one taking up roughly, I don't know, what's that? Two fifths of the space of the pack or the size of the pack. And you can see through and that's a fairly decent size. It's about the size of a small camp pillow. And below that we have another pouch or another pocket which carries on the same, the width, all the way down to the bottom with your bungee and your cord lock on it. So you can just give it a tug and that'll hold everything in there in place. And now coming to The other side. So this is the side where you've got your organizer pouch on the back and your small pocket. We have one pocket at the bottom, which is big enough for, again, for a small pillow. I used to keep my down pillow for my hammock in there. And it kept it all lofted up. Above that we have another mesh pocket with a single zip at the top. 
good size pocket for organising your, all your gear. And the third pocket is on this side. We have a zip at the bottom so we can gain access when we've got the packet open. And we also have a zip at the top. So if we just want to open the pack and grab something else, like uh, for example, your hydration, or not your hydration, your water filter kit could go in there. So you just open the top and you can grab it from there. So as you can see, that pouch goes all the way through. So that's your pack. So there you go, that's the Rush 72 tactical pack. Good, strong pack. Great quality. Would I recommend it? I would recommend it. But there's only one downfall to this for me. I'm only five foot six tall. I might have a bit of a tummy, but the rest of me is fairly slim. And I cannot get comfortable wearing this pack. I can always feel the yoke of the shoulder straps here pressing on my neck and on my shoulders. And at the same time, when I'm wearing the pack, it always feels like it's pulling backwards. It's got all this here. It just seems like there's too much weight. But apart from that, it's a great pack. If you're thinking about buying one, see if you know anybody who's got one, fill it up and ask them if you can walk around for an hour or two with it and see if you get on with it. If you do, great, go and buy one. But make sure, because like I said, I bought it first before I even tried one on. And I cannot get comfortable with it at all. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button down below and the bell button next to it so you can be notified of all future videos. And if you are a subscriber, I thank you very much. So until next time, get out there, have some fun, and take care.